Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another creative cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought we would actually take our second part of our look at motion effects inside of Media Composer and Symphony. We'd expand on that a little bit. And I wanted to show you a technique that I use, you know, on a you know semi-regular basis when I'm doing corporate videos. And it's actually what you see in front of you right now. You can see that I have some basketball footage. And what happens is the basketball footage slows down to a stop and then I highlight a certain part of the shot. In this case, I'm just highlighting the basketball player. Maybe we need to say, oh, you know, their technique isn't really quite right at this point in his, you know, attempted dunk. And in most cases, you see this technique is something that really you can only do inside of Adobe's Photoshop with Adobe's After Effects, you know, using the two programs in conjunction with each other. But it's actually not the case. And we're actually going to use the motion effects technique that we used in the last lesson. We're going to expand on that a little bit. And what I'm going to do is show you how inside of the Marquee Title Tool, we can get in and do this exact technique that you see in front of you here. Okay, short introduction. Let's quit out of QuickTime and let's get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt-Tab into Symphony. Obviously, Command and Tab for all my Mac friends out there. And the first thing I'm going to do is just open my sequences bin. And of course, before we you know get rolling, we got to pick a shot to work with here. So what I'm going to do is just come down to my basketball footage here. And let's just delete this random sequence we happen to have in there. And let's just find a shot that I think is going to be good to work with. There we go. This looks like a good one. And we're going to want to freeze him kind of about there, I think. You know, sort of, you know, frame before here. And we're just going to say, you know, his, his form is all wrong, you know, at this point in his layup or in his dunk. So we're going to want to have it freeze here and then go back to playing normal speed down towards the end. So what we're going to do is hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. We're going to hit B to drop this into a timeline. We obviously want to create that inside of our sequences bin. And we're going to hit Control and 8 on Windows Command and 8 on the Mac. We're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom to the T section. T obviously for Time Warp. We're going to select the basic Time Warp and we're going to drag it and drop it down onto our shot. What we're going to do now, step into Effects Mode. Now again, my shortcut for Effects Mode, I know you all know it by now, so sing along, is Shift and Y on the keyboard. If you don't have it mapped, you can obviously select it right here or have it selected right over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to call up effects mode. And what we're going to do is we're just going to come down here roughly to about the point where I think this is going to freeze. And I'm just going to say, you know, about there is going to be where we're going to freeze at. And we're just going to have the whole sort of process take about that long. Now what I'm going to do at this point now is I'm going to take this keyframe. We're just going to drag it right down to zero, just like that. Now you'll see that as soon as I do that, the freeze frame isn't quite where we want it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold Alt on a Windows Option on the Mac for us to adjust this keyframe however we want. And you'll see now we're almost there. Sometimes it just requires a little bit of playing along with. That's pretty darn good right about there. Okay, so we're going to freeze this for a little bit, maybe to about here. I'll just add a keyframe. And then what we're going to do about there is we're just going to have it go back up to normal speed here. So we'll just send that right back up to 100. Now, obviously, because we have it freeze like such, and it obviously takes up, you know, almost the length of our shot here, not almost the length, probably about, you know, a third of the length of the shot. What we're going to want to do at the end is just extend this shot down a little bit so that we use up the entire shot here. And I'm just going to come all the way down to where this freezes right there. We'll just come back the very first frame. I'm using trim mode right now. Obviously, the shortcut on the keyboard is the U key. There we go. So what's going to happen now? If I come back to the beginning, I'm simply going to hit play. You'll see our basketball player will come in. He'll slow down to a freeze right there. This is where we're going to want to highlight. And then he goes back to normal speed, just like that. Now, obviously, we could extend this as much as we want. If we wanted to, maybe I will just extend it a little bit here, just so we got a little bit more time to play with. I'm just going to Take this keyframe, we'll move it down by holding Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac. Well, let's do that again here. Take the keyframe, there we go. Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac. Just take this, drag it down like such as well. There we go. So we now have a longer freeze in here. There we go, slow down, perfect, nice. And then we should go back to, there we go. Now what I think I'm going to do here as well, you'll remember this from the last lesson, is I'm just going to come back in and I'm going to set this to be blended VTR just because I like that slow-mo much better very nice okay good so I'm happy with the way that this looks so what I want to do now is I want to do this highlight okay so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to close out of the motion editor here 
And let's get into the marquee title tool, and I'm going to show you how this is going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to navigate up to Clip. I'm simply going to come down to New Title. I'm going to select the Marquee Title tool. And let's just sort of quickly rejig things here. I'm just going to say View, Show All Buttons. There we go. Very nice. And like I said, this is where we're going to want to get in, and we're going to want to highlight our basketball player. Now, we're going to need two things to do this. One, I'm going to need to determine what I'm going to want to be black, which is essentially everything in the frame. The second thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to come up with a cutout for my basketball player. Now, there's a couple ways that we can do this. What I'm going to do first of all, though, is I'm going to just do our background here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this element here. Uh, this is the square pen tool, obviously the rectangular tool. M is the shortcut on the keyboard. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle over the entire screen. Now, this is obviously going to be white, and that's fine. What we actually want to do is just make it black for the purposes of what we're doing. What I'm also going to do here is I'm just going to make it bigger than the frame like such. Okay. Now, for the time being, I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to zoom back here by hitting Control and minus on the keyboard on Windows, Command and minus for all my Mac friends. I'm just going to disable that main surface because I don't need to see it right this second. What I'm going to do now is just zoom back in here. Let's just click on our canvas here. I'm going to zoom back in. And what we want to do is we want to highlight the basketball player. Now, we can be as sort of... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? We can be as lazy or as detailed as we want when it comes to this. Now, the lazy man way of highlighting our basketball player is we can simply take the uh, circle tool here, uh, and what we can do is simply just draw an oval around him, kind of like that. Get it roughly where we're going to want it to go. Let's just say like that. I'm, I'm you know, fairly happy with the way that that looks. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make this color here to be black. And we're just going to zoom back here because I want to make sure that with our other element here, I'm just going to turn it back on. We now have both elements on the screen. We have them both at 100% visibility. What I'm going to do is with everything at 100% visibility, I'm going to come up and I'm going to select both of my elements. I'm going to select the first element here. I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard and I'm just going to select the other element. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate up to object. And if I come right down here, five from the bottom, you're going to see that we have an option called combine shapes. And as soon as I do that, what's going to happen is, is that this element is now going to, the, the oval is going to cut a hole in the rectangle. Very, very cool. Well, that's pretty cool, but what's even cooler than that, I'm just going to zoom back in, is now if I come back and I adjust the opacity of that, we can actually adjust how transparent or non-transparent this element is. Now, what I normally do is I leave it as complete 100% black inside the title tool because I'll get in and I'll adjust this inside of the 3D tool. Now, I know, you know, first question that pops in your head, you're thinking to yourself, Kev, that's fantastic and everything. That's a very hard-edged element. Well, you know what? You're, you're right. It is hard-edged, and I'm going to talk about that in just a second. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to undo what I just did. I'm just going to zoom back here. There we go. And I'm actually going to delete this shape because I said there was two ways to do this. There's the lazy man way, which is the way that I did it. I'm just going to turn that main layer off because what I can also do here is I can zoom in. I can use the pen tool here and I can draw Well, hold on a second here. I can't actually do that. Why? Because I have this background element here. So what I'm going to do is just delete that background element here for a second. I'm just going to zoom back in because now I can use the pen tool properly. And I'm just going to draw a shape around our basketball player here. Now, of course, I could adjust my splines here to make them curved and there you go there's my shape what I'm going to do again just zoom back here we want to make this shape of course black now what we also want to do here I'm just going to select these points I'm just going to drag them down a little bit farther than the screen so it's easy for me to grab when I get in and create my rectangular shape like such now what I'm going to do again hold shift on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to select both shapes and I'm simply going to say object and I'm going to say combine shapes and take a look at that we now have a very cool customized cutout. But I know what you're probably thinking to yourself. You're thinking, well, hold on a second, Kev. Guess what? I want to have that as a soft border. Can you do that? Well, yes, I can. But i got to think a little bit outside the box to do it. Let's again, let's just delete everything that I have here. Now, I'm just going to show you this the lazy man way or the lazy person way, I guess, is the politically correct way to say it because obviously, you know, can, you can have male and female editors that are lazy. And what I'm going to do is just use the simple circle tool here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a shape around my basketball player kind of like such. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to turn the drop shadow on. Now, I know you probably know where I'm going with this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure that the opacity is turned right up 
And I'm going to turn the softness up just so that it's fairly soft, kind of like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the main surface. So the only thing that I have is the shadow. I know you know where I'm going with this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my rectangular tool. Again, I'm just going to zoom back here. Sometimes it's just easier to see things when you got the canvas a little bit smaller. What I'm going to do again, just grab that rectangular tool. I'm going to draw the shape just like such. Again, we want to make sure that it is black. Now, of course, what we're going to do is hold Shift on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to select both shapes. I'm going to come up to Object. I'm going to come down to Combine Shapes. And guess what I now have? I now have a soft edge cutout of our basketball player. Now, obviously, that will work with the custom shape that I did as well. Now, you're also going to see we've got a little bit of softness going on at the edges. So what we want to do is always make sure that this is a little bit bigger than what we need. Now, like I said before, I don't do any of the adjustments to the opacity inside a marquee. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this for a second. I'm going to say Save to Bin. We'll just call this Cutout. Okay, we'll just save it into Sequences because I don't have my graphics bin open, so that's fine. So there it is right there. We don't see anything because obviously it's black on the cutout. But what we do want to do is find out where this comes to a stop, right about there. And we're going to want it to fade in right at that point there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new video layer by pressing Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac. I'll just auto patch up to video layer 2. I'm going to mark an endpoint by hitting I on the keyboard. Again, on both Mac and Windows, we're just going to extend this all the way down to about here. There we go. I'm going to mark that as my out point. I'm going to hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to edit that in. And you'll see there's my cutout. So what we want to do now is we want to step into effects mode by hitting Shift and Y on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. And I want to set the opacity or the level to be, let's just say about 50%, maybe even a little bit more. Let's go maybe 75%. Very nice. What I want to do now is come back to the beginning. I'm going to add a keyframe by simply hitting the keyframe button right up here in the composer window. I'm going to say plus 12, which is half a second. Remember, we're working in 24 frames. Come down to the end here. We're going to add a keyframe, say minus 12 to come back 12 frames. And I'm going to take both of these keyframes right here. I'm going to hold Control and Windows Command on the Mac. And let's get back to our effects palette here. Actually, I should do that again. There we go. I'm just going to slide the effects palette out of the way like such. You'll see I still have both those keyframes selected, and we're going to set the level down at zero. Now let's just make sure that it's at zero, perfect. It's at zero, perfect. And guess what I have now? I have our basketball player coming in. He slows down to a stop, and then he's highlighted. Now obviously we got that little bit of a jump in the slow-mo. I'm not going to worry about that too much right now, but take a look at that. You now have a way to get in and highlight things inside of Media Composer and Symphony. Now you'll see here at the edge a little bit, it's not exactly as dark as I'd want it to be. That's how I can get in and adjust that. Remember, I mentioned that in the Marquee Title tool. I could extend the edges out so I don't see any of that. But you know what? Again, this is a technique that in many cases had to be done inside of Adobe's After Effects using elements from Photoshop. Or you could even do it with masks if you wanted to. But it's now all done from within the comfort of your Media Composer or Symphony Timeline. And let's just say hypothetically we were talking about the basketball here, and maybe there was an issue with you know, the basketball, it wasn't regulation. What we could always do is come up to Clip, come down to New Title. What I'm going to do is just simply select the Standard Title tool. I'm going to draw a line right over to that basketball like such. What we're going to do is we're just going to take this line, we're going to fatten it up a little bit just like that. I think maybe I'll make it yellow just that it stands out like that. We'll give it a bit of a drop shadow here. Just punch in a value of 2. And maybe we'll soften it up a bit. Control, Shift, and H on Windows. Command, Shift, and H on the Mac. There we go. But what I want to do in this case is I just don't want a line pointed at the basketball. I want to come right over here, and I want to make it an arrow. Now, that was actually the wrong way. We want it to be this arrow here and take a look at what we have now. We now have a way to get in, and I could even get in and customize this arrow if I wanted to. Make it even bigger like such. Say OK, and take a look at that. We now have a way that if I close out of the standard title tool, we'll just call this arrow. What we can do is just hit Shift and Y, or pardon me, Control and Y in Windows, Command and Y on the Mac to create a new layer. And maybe just a little bit after this comes in, we'll just edit our arrow in. I'll hit F12 on the keyboard, which is my shortcut for fade effect. What we'll do is just put a value of 12 for the fade up and fade out. Take a look at what we have now. Slow down. Freeze, highlight, arrow, then the arrow fades out, the highlight fades out, and the shot keeps going. So take a look at that. A very cool 
and believe it or not, very simple technique to do right from within the Media Composer and Symphony timeline to save you time from having to go out and do it in a third-party compositing application. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.